first thing that we're gonna do is remove our passenger side seat, and then this trim panel, as well as the one on the opposite side, and then this one right here. So we're just gonna grab a hold of this panel right here, and just pull it straight out and lift it up. And then this one right here, we'll just grab it, remove it as well. And then we'll do the same thing for the opposite side on the frontmost panel. Now we're gonna grab our wiring harness. We're gonna locate our rocker switch. And we're gonna find this plug right here. We're gonna disconnect it. That's gonna separate the rocker switch from the rest of the harness. So you may have to open up your factory rocker switch holes just enough in order to get our Super ATV rocker switch in there. It shouldn't take much, maybe just a little minor trimming around the edges here and it'll pop right into place. We're going to take our rocker switch and install it to the left of the steering wheel. So we're just going to take our harness portion that's attached to our rocker switch, feed it through and we'll just pop our rocker switch. You just want to make sure it fully seats and that your rocker switch still works. And now we're going to grab the other end of the harness and attach it to this portion of it. But I like to take my harness and run it right over top of all of the steering shafts, you know, the column, the power steering unit. I'll just run it right over top and then start working my wires back down towards this way. That way we can feed them underneath the console and connect them. So we've taken our wire and we've ran it over top of our steering column, our steering shaft, power steering unit and all that. So we're just going to let it hang down and then we're going to come over here to the passenger side. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this wire and just feed it straight through to the opposite side. And we can reach through here and just make our connection really quick. We can actually pull the wires over here to this side a little bit just to show you. So that's what the connection should look like. And like I said, we'll come back through and tie everything up once we get a little bit closer to being done. So now, I'm gonna stretch the harness out and find this portion of our connections. This is gonna to connect to the rear portion of our whip light harness. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this and we're gonna feed it right down and around and through here. You can go right underneath the frame rail. And you'll just wanna kinda of get all the harness up underneath there because everything's gonna to need to be ran like this. And just go ahead and ignore the camera tripod. It's in here for filming purposes. So we have our hot and our ground. Then we're gonna grab our control box portion of the harness, which is gonna have our leads for our left and right lights on it as well. We'll get this portion of the harness and you'll see there'll be two bullet connectors. One's gonna be black for ground, one's gonna be red for hot, obviously. We'll go ahead and we'll connect red to red. These bullet connectors sometimes can be hard to get together. Just make sure you get them all the way together. They'll kind of click whenever they get there. Then you'll just want to take the rubber, the rubber coating and the cover and just slide these over top of each other and then we'll take a heat gun and melt them down. That way we know that we got a good seal. And for machines that are going to be in the water a lot, you can Take electrical tape and go around these connections as well. It's not gonna hurt anything. So we got these set up just like this. So we're gonna grab the heat gun and go ahead and get these so they're together. Now we're gonna locate our control box for our whip lights, which we just previously made the connection for. There's gonna be a right side or passenger side and then a left side. We're gonna go ahead and undo the leads. We're gonna locate the right side. We're gonna go right down here underneath the console. We're gonna start feeding our wire out towards the back of the machine. And then we're gonna to head to the back and grab a hold of the wire and pull it through. So we're just gonna grab our wire and pull, pull it through and pull enough slack that we can run it up to about right here. So that way whenever we get our whip installed, we can make our connection. So we're just gonna let this wire hang for now and we're gonna repeat the same step for the opposite side wire. So now it's time to get the whip light 
installed to the machine. We're running a custom cage setup, and you know we got our speaker bar back here. So we went ahead and we made our own custom bracket. So we're gonna go ahead and pull down on the quick disconnect on the whip light and remove our base. And we're gonna go ahead and unscrew the nut off of here. And we're gonna install our base to our bracket. The main thing is you just wanna make sure that it goes washer, lock washer, then nut. So we're just gonna drop it right in here. Remember, washer, lock washer, and then our nut. And get it started and then just spin it all the way up there. Get it hand tight. And if you wanted to, you could come from the bottom with a socket and extension. We're just gonna use a ratchet wrench here from the top. And this thing doesn't have to be super tight or anything like that. We just get it to where it crushes the lock washer and then we know we're tight. So once we have our base on there, we're gonna go ahead and grab our actual whip light. Slide it down into position. Lift up on the quick disconnect collar there. Slide it right down in. And we're gonna rotate this around so that our wiring's hanging down underneath the machine. And we'll bring this up here to show you guys how to make this connection. Bring it up through here just to make it easier to show you. So when you look down at each of these plugs, there's gonna be one side of it that's notched out. You see on the male plug, it has a groove right there with an arrow. And then there's an arrow right there. So you just wanna make sure you line your arrows up. Make sure it goes together nicely. You don't wanna to have to force it or anything like that. Get them all the way together. And then you'll take your nut here that's on the whip light side of the harness and just go ahead and thread that down there as far as you can. You wanna make sure it's nice and tight. That's gonna help seal the connection together. Make sure no water gets in there and ruins the connection. So then we're just gonna pull our excess harness down. I recommend leaving just a little bit. That way if you go to disconnect it or anything like that, you know, you have a little bit of slack to be able to get it all to screw together. It makes it a lot easier, especially if you gotta load, this, load your machine on the trailer or take the whip lights off or what have you. So now we're just gonna go ahead and tie up all our wiring up underneath the machine, and then we're gonna head back in the machine, finish up our wiring, and get our panels reinstalled. Next, we're gonna be hooking up our hot and ground wires that are gonna power our whip lights. As you can see, we've changed our connectors out for this specific application. You may have to do so. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ground wire and we're gonna hook it to the center stud on the bus bar here, and then our red wire is gonna go to the very top stud on the bus bar. Now repeat all these steps for the opposite side. So before we go through and reinstall all of our trim panels, we're gonna to wanna to test these whip lights out. What we're gonna do first is go into the App Store. Whether you have an iPhone or you have an Android, we're gonna type in Happy Lighting. Gonna go ahead and search that. And we already have it downloaded. You'll wanna go ahead and download it. And then we'll just go in and we'll open up our app and we'll go ahead and turn our machine on at least to where the key's turned on and we'll turn our rocker switch on for our whip lights. And we'll wanna go through and make sure that we're hooked up to our whip lights. It'll go over here under the far right group manage. You'll see my device. You just wanna make sure that you're connected. Once you are, click the power button. As you can see, ours are on. There's a variety of colors to choose from. You have a color wheel here, you can spin it around, change your color to whatever you'd like. You can link it into your music. You can link it into your voice. Like right now, it's linked into my voice. The whip lights are actually changing color whenever I talk. It has over 300 patterns for you to choose from. And you know, they are fully adjustable from the phone. You know, you can find in pretty much any combination you would ever like, you can adjust them to fit your needs. Now all you're gonna do is reinstall your trim panels as well as your passenger side seat. And that's how super quick and easy it is. Install Super ATV's whip lights on this Can-Am Maverick X3. 
For more information on these whip lights or any of Super ATV's great products, feel free to give us a call at 855-743-3427 or check us out online at superatv.com. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.